Okay, today we're going over the supervisory instrumentation on a steam turbine at a 580 megawatt coal plant. Uh, right now we're putting out 400 megawatts gross. This would be the actual output of the generator. The plant takes about 30 megawatts to run, so our actual output's about 386 going down the line. Uh, boiler pressure is 2400 putting out 400 megawatts out of the generator. Down here we have an issue, the 500 kV line voltage. This is the voltage leaving the plant. Uh, it's stepped from 2400 kV to 500,000 volts. Uh, we're showing a 545,000 volt line voltage. Uh, this is in excess of our limits. This would be a NERC violation which is North American Electric Reliability Corporation. Um, at this point, there's not much we can do. This will be a transmission operator problem who will have to start uh, bucking different plants, try and get the voltage down. And this says that there is the demands down and the voltage is running too high. We'd also call the BAO balance authority operator um, let them know, but they're probably very well aware of it. Anyhow, it's just a little side note. Uh, we're putting out 2398 kilovolts out of the generator. The main part of this will be the steam turbine supervisory instrumentation. Uh, this is one of the screens here. This is the position of the rotor. Uh, it's set to trip in mills. How this works, there's a tapered part on the shaft and it has proximity sensors. They're tied to the casing. So this is measuring the difference in position of the rotor shaft to the casing. There's two sets of them. One sits uh, about here right before the thrust bearing. Then the other one's back behind the LP turbines measuring expansion back here. The problem with this kind of a steam turbine, as you admit hot steam, the turbine rotors are going to grow quicker than the casing. The casing is fairly thick metal and it will take longer for it to heat up and expand. So you have to be careful how quick you heat them up because your rotor is going to grow faster than the casing. And likewise, if you shut down, if the rotor contracts too much, <clears throat> it can actually do damage. You can have the blades in the diaphragms. These are rotor positions. These are the trip points, minus 40 mils um, going short, plus 40 mils going long. <laughs> Differential expansion. Uh, it's showing it down here on the governor end and the generator end. <clears throat> Interesting point of this. Uh, this casing on this end here can grow about an inch and a half. So there's a lot of heat and these do expand a lot. The whole length of this shaft is probably 120 feet. It's quite long. So you have your thrust bearings sit here. You'll have your thrust bearing temperatures. Uh, they can tell you what's going on with the machine. This is where electrical loads, uh, steam imbalance, you know, which, what's the general direction of the shaft. The actual thrust is balanced in the IPHP with balance diaphragms and on your L, low pressure one and low pressure two steam is admitted in the center and then expands both ways so that kind of balances the thrust there this thing has nine general bearings on it they're listed up here you have your bearing metal temperatures uh, this is very critical as your Babbitt line bearings. If it gets too hot, your Babbitt will start softening. It can also be a sign of no lubrication flow, um, hot oil temperature, or just a plain bearing failure. We have our bearing vibrations in X axis and Y axis. These are relative. Um, they're not absolute. So this is telling you the difference in mills between bearing housing 
and the actual bearing shaft. <coughs> so this will tell you how much the shaft is moving in relation to the bearings. Over here you have rotor eccentricity. This only works at about 600 RPM. This will tell you if you have a warped shaft, um, if you need to run it longer in turning gear. The problem with these machines, if you shut down, they have to go on turning gear because down here, this part will be colder, then up here will be hotter, so they'll bow up. Uh, sometimes it's called cat backing on gas turbines. So eccentricity is very important. You need to get these things on turning gear. When you shut down, it's critical to have your unit on turning gear. This one won't go on turning gear until the speed hits zero. They have a, here there's a plate with holes in it and uses oil jets. <clears throat> and when it quits moving, it builds up pressure and that will let the pressure switch start the turning motor. If your turning gear motor won't run, you can also use an air ratchet. It sits back in here. You can use an air ratchet and try and rotate it 180 degrees <clears throat> um, every few minutes. They recommend about a half hour or so. So this unit has four separate steam turbines. The basic flow comes out of the boiler at about 2400 PSI, 1005 degrees. The steam from your high pressure goes back to the boiler, is reheated to about 1005 degrees. And it comes back to the IP. IP steam uh, split and feeds both of your LP steam turbines. So thrust bearings can tell you a lot of the actual conditions in the machine. And just like bearing vibrations, you can have really high bearing vibrations back in here and it can be a problem in the rotor. Have a lock bar or something in the rotor that hasn't moved. So pay attention to bearing vibrations can really tell you a lot what's going on with it. This other screen, this is the DEH unit overview, a digital electrohydraulic unit. This is the control set point. This um, is used for startups. You can also run the unit from here if you have to. But this runs on a, a curve. Your valve positions are based on 2400 PSI and you'll set the valves to get your megawatts. So at low pressure, you won't get the megawatts. But this is usually what's used to start up with. We have our total gross megawatts. We have our net megawatts. Uh, we have the impulse pressure loop. This is important for doing valve tests. And what this does is balance the pressure in the turbine casing. So when you do a valve test, like one side of the governor valves will close while the other one's open. And this will maintain an even pressure on the unit. You should be down about half loading to do a valve test. The purpose of the valve test is to make sure your throttle valves close. These are your intercept valves for intermediate pressure. Uh, these are intermediate stop valves. Your intercept valves are really used for turbine overspeeds. If you have a quick load rejection. Uh, these will close and open very quickly and try and hold down the turbine speed. This is steam coming back from the boiler. Um, they work pretty good for quick load rejections or um, trying to maintain turbine speed. These are your governor valve positions. There's eight of them on this unit. These are your throttle valves. They're 100% open. When you start up, there's a pilot valve in these that will admit the steam. Uh, your governor valves will be full open. One problem you can have with a unit like this with your governor valves partially open it can actually cool the steam going to the turbine and get a pressure drop. Ideally, if you can run them full open, it's the most efficient, but that doesn't happen very often. These are a poppet type valve. 
Uh, this one throttle valve on one side feeds four governor valves. The other throttle valve on the other side feeds the other four governor valves. These are tested about every two weeks. You go through a test program just to make sure that the trip valves work. Um, another screen is important. This one here, we have the hood sprays. These spray water on the LP exhaust. You try and cool the LP exhaust at low loads. Uh, there's no steam flow in them. The back blades are just kind of beating themselves in the steam. It creates a lot of friction. So there's no work being done. And they're actually trying to compress the steam, creating a lot of heat. So these will come on at about 600 RPM, then run to about 15% load. Now here you have your first stage steam inlet, the first stage metal temperature. This is the steam going into the HP. Uh, you have your gland steam temperature. This is really important gland steam. If you're ever running and you lose gland steam, um, low loads, you need to break vacuum. You don't want to pull a bunch of cold air across the hot shaft. It can warp it and do damage, tear up the steam seals, and create problems. High pressure, intermediate pressure end wall. This is the difference in temperature between gland steam and the shaft. HP IP blade ring. Uh, let's tell you the temperature back here on the IP section. You have your low pressure gland steam. Uh, saying your IP exhaust is 573 degrees. This is going back to the boiler. Over here you have your steam chest. You have the deep temperature probe. Uh, these are thermal couples on this unit. And you have shallow. You don't want more than 150 degree difference between the shallow and the deep metal temperature. That's too much of a temperature difference across the thick steel parts and it can cause cracking in the future. So it's kind of important to watch this when you start up. You have your hot reheat steam coming back. Uh, we're showing 907 out of the boiler. You know, 950 super heat temperature right now. LP exhaust, about 84 degrees coming out of your LP. It's still steam. Uh, it's running underneath the vacuum basically going into the LPs you have 94 PSI G 573 degrees Fahrenheit so it's extracting quite a bit more steam heat out of the steam this screen's really good for starting up up here these are the critical resonant range frequent speeds you want to stay out of. Uh, you want to go through these fairly quickly. You don't want to hold here. Like this should be the exciter critical speed. Um, each one of these is a different section of the steam turbine that has a critical speed. Up here is about 600 RPM supervisory check. You go out and check for rubbing. Uh, make sure there's good oil flow of the bearings. Do a quick inspection of the whole unit. Um, over here is kind of a heat soak range and up here is you do your valve transfer. This is from the pilot valve on the throttle valve to the governor valve control. Let's get 3400. And then at 3600 here, there's no resonant frequencies. What's nice about a generator this size, the line frequency doesn't really affect the speed much. It can kind of um, plow through that. The smaller units, they'll swing around a little bit on the speed due to the frequency changes on the line. This has rotor position. This one has the bearings. These are absolute. So it's a little different measurement than the other one. The other one's a little more accurate. These will pick up any kind of vibrations in the machine. This is differential expansion. Uh, the generator end has moved about an inch. 
the governor ends moved about a half an inch from where it was. This is the casing expansion. They actually measure the casing movement on the governor end. This one has moved 1.2 inches, which is really pretty amazing for a machine like that. But it's also in a thousand degrees, so there's a lot of heat. Here we have the water detection temperatures. This is important in case you're getting water back. About 100 degrees DP temperature. The unit should be tripped. That means you have water coming in. But this measures the temperature of the cover versus the base. So if you have water in here, the base can be a lot colder. Uh, this can tell you you're getting water in the unit somehow. This unit has to have 100 degrees superheat to roll. We have our valve transfer screen. You'll see this when we bring the unit online. This is just looking at the steam chest melt temperature versus the steam temperature. So you hold here until the temperatures are pretty close to equal. That way the metal has warmed up to the temperature of the steam. One thing I didn't mention on this screen, this first stage metal, this will tell you if you can do a hot start, hard, hot start or a cold start. Depends on your metal temperature. If the unit's hot, you want to ro roll it fast and get going. Otherwise you'll be cooling down the rotor and the metal. Uh, if the steam comes through the governor valves, it's throttled down and it will cool it. So that's kind of different. Cold start, you have to go slower to heat up the casing. Hot start, you need to go faster so you don't cool down the rotor as much as that casing. Uh, this, you just have your DEH manual panel. This is where you latch the turbine. Um, OPC, overspeed protection monitor. This is what will actuate the IP intercept valves. Boiler reheater block trip. This can be used to keep the boiler on line and take the steam turbine off. So if you have to work on your steam turbine, you want to keep the boiler warm, you can do this and just run igniters. We have an OPC test. Um, as far as running the valves, it can be done from here, but it's only really special conditions. Oh, the screen's got a pre-start checklist, which is kind of handy for starting up. Basically, it shows you with this thing. This thing has ATC, automatic turbine control. Uh, these are the overrides and alarms that come in from that. A lot of the times we'll not use this and just run manually. This gives you a little more information. Pre-synchronization checklist. These are what have to be made up in order to sync online. We'll show this when we're doing the actual sync online. But these kind of screens are really pretty handy uh, in case you miss something or some switch didn't make up. It gives you an indication of where to look. But this unit has a, a lot of protection stuff on it fairly large steam turbine and I guess that's about it for this one.